Hello and welcome to Nit Hrania Game Club. My name is Branislav Berec and you're watching Game in a Nutshell, the series of videos designed for explaining the board game rules. Today we're going to learn how to play Versailles 1919, the new GMT game. Uh, in this game you will be settling multiple issues at the end of the World War I and it's a game for 2-4 to four players and also a solo game. I will explain primarily the rules for 3-4 and four player game. The changes for two player games are at the end of the video and I will make a separate video for the solo rules. So let's get started. To set the game up, first choose a starting player and then each player in a player order will choose a country. In a four player game, choose all four countries, France, UK, US and Italy. In a three player game, Italy will not be represented by a human player. And in a two-player game, players will only play for France and UK, however US will be present in the game in a form of a third player, controlled by both players. I'll talk about the two-player game at the end of the video. Then each player will take 15 influence cubes and 3 military discs in the same color. UK is the red player, US is white player, Italy is yellow and France is blue. Since this is a GMT game, you will always have one more component of each type as a reserve component, so make sure you don't use them in the game. Then create the deck of these issue cards. First, set aside the card named Game End. Then shuffle all the remaining cards and deal three issues to this waiting room, then two issues to this on the table area, and one issue card will be placed face up in the discard pile. Then place exactly 20 cards face down on this draw deck space. Then the end game card face down on top of those 20 cards. And then all the remaining cards on top of that. With that, the draw deck is ready. If you want to have a longer game, then instead of 20 cards, you can place 15 cards under that game end card, or only 10, or only 5. If you only place five cards under the end game card, you can actually shuffle those five cards with the game end card together. Then you can place the remaining cards on top of that. Then shuffle the deck of event cards and draw two cards face up and place them to the waiting room and place one card to the on the table area. Then shuffle the strategy cards and place one more than the number of players in the game face up next to the game board. Place this active player card to this space. Then place the happiness markers of all players on the space 20 of this happiness track, including the Japan marker. In longer games, if you only place 10 issue cards under the endgame card, happiness markers of human players would start on the space 22, and if you only place 5 cards under the endgame card, they would start at the space 24. However, non-human player markers would always start at 20. And finally, place the power keg tokens on these designated spaces and the unrest markers to these spaces in each region. And that's the end of the setup. In this game, players take turns starting with the first player and then continuing in a clockwise direction until the game ends. On your turn, you must perform a political action and you may take a military action, and you may take that action before or after that mandatory political action. When taking the political action, you must choose one of the three following options. First, you can take the influence cubes from your available pool and place them on the issues in the waiting room or in the on the table area. The second option is to reclaim the exhausted influence cubes and potentially the military discs from this exhausted area and place them back into your available area. The third option is to settle one of the issues that are on the table. When performing the optional military action, you can either take one of your military units and deploy that unit in one of the regions, or you can demobilize one of your units and demobilized units are actually out of the game. The game usually ends when this game end issue is settled. In a very, very rare case, the game can also end if you have to draw another issue card from the draw deck, but there are none. Players score victory points from issues they win, then they score victory points from the strategy cards they will choose during the game, 
and they will also score victory points from the happiness based on their position on the happiness track. Political action is a mandatory action, so you must choose one of those three options. The first one is placing the influence cubes on issues, and you can place those influence cubes on issues that are in a waiting room or also on the table. However, you must place them on exactly two issues. So not only one, not three issues, exactly two. In addition, you must then have the majority on both issues. If you already have a majority on the issue, you must place minimum one cube, but you're not limited to only one. If you want, you can place more cubes than just one. If you don't have the majority on the issue, like in this case, you have to place more than the number of cubes of the player with the majority. So for this issue, the minimum would be three, but again, you can place more than that. When placing influence cubes, you may only place influence from the available area in front of you. You may never use cubes from the exhausted area. You may never use cubes from other issues and so on and so forth. When reclaiming influence, you can reclaim up to six influence cubes from this exhausted area and all military discs. When you do, return them to your available area. You must take all the military units in that exhausted area and you may also take any deployed military units which are deployed in the regions. The third option is to settle one of the issues on the table. You may never settle an issue in the waiting room. In addition to settle an issue, issues must have some influence cubes on them. Settling an issue is a very important part of the game and Although you're not in control of the issue you're going to settle, it might be strategically important to take this settle an issue action. The process itself has five steps, which are also illustrated on the game board. And first, the selected issue will be resolved, and it will be resolved by the player controlling that issue, so the player with the most cubes on that issue. In the second step, the current event on the table will be resolved, and then both cards will be discarded. Now, why it may be strategically important to take this settle an issue action is the fact that steps 3, 4 and 5 will be completely controlled by the active player. So the active player will decide which of those two events in the waiting room will be placed on the table and also which of the three issues in the waiting room will be placed on the table. In addition, the active player will also decide which issues will be added to the waiting room. And finally, in the fifth step, new event card will be drawn and placed in the waiting room. And with that, the settle an issue action will be over. So let's cover all those steps in more detail. First, the active player will take the active player card because this process may take some time and players may forget who is the active player. So let's say we have Italy as the active country. And let's say Italy decides to settle this issue. Now, the first step is resolved by the player controlling the issue. So the player with the most influence cubes on that issue. All the influence cubes of the controlling player must be moved to the exhausted area. All other players move half of their influence cubes to the exhausted area rounded down. So US player with three cubes would move one cube to the exhausted area and two cubes would return back to the available area. There's one small exception to the rule. If the active player, in this case Italy, settles the issue and the active player does not control that issue, it was controlled by French in this case, the active player may take all the influence cubes from that issue and place them back to their available area. They don't move any cubes to the exhausted area. Now, the controlling player takes the issue card and places that issue somewhere in their player area and they will have to choose one of those options on the issue card. You can find the explanation of all the icons on the issue cards on the last page of the rulebook. However, let me give you at least some brief description. National flags with this dark red faces means that you have to reduce the happiness of those nations. For each face symbol, you have to reduce the happiness by one. Since this issue was won by French player, obviously French player doesn't want to reduce their own happiness by two, so they will decide to reduce the US happiness by one. 
as these icons indicate when you reduce the happiness, move the markers towards the zero space, when you increase the happiness, move them towards the 25 space. So in this case, US marker will be placed one space towards the zero. Then EU is the symbol for the region and this is one unrest token. That means that this unrest token will move one space to the right in the corresponding region. The position of these unrest tokens are important for uprising checks, which I'll talk about later in the video. For now, you need to know that the unrest tokens can only move between these military units and these power keg tokens. Unrest token may never get to the same space as the military disc, so it will only remain one space to the left. And if the power keg token would be moved to the right as well, Again, unrest token will never get to the same space as the power keg token. It will only be one space to the right. Then if the selected option has one of these icons, place the corresponding strategy counter on that issue. There are several other types of these strategy icons or strategy counters which can be placed on the issue card. And to cover some of the other symbols, if you see this unrest symbol with the red cross, you move the unrest token one space to the left. And again, if it would move to the keg token, it would remain in its space. Obviously, this symbol indicates that you increase the unrest position by two spaces. The green face indicates that you increase the happiness of the corresponding country. And when you select an option with this kind of icon, place the corresponding empire token on such issue card and issues with this symbol allows you to place one of the naval squadron tokens on the issue card. If you have a symbol with both flags, you can decide which flag you choose and which counter is actually placed on the card. So, once the selected option on the issue card is fully completed, the issue card is resolved. That's the end of the step one. In the second step, you have to resolve the current event and you have to resolve the effect of the card. If there's an influence cube on that event card, the owner of that cube resolves that event. Otherwise, it's the active player resolving that event. Then, when you resolve the event, you must fully resolve that text, unless the card says the effect is optional. In that case, you may, you don't have to fully resolve it. After resolving, the card is discarded to the discard pile, and the influence cube is placed to the exhausted area. Then all the remaining steps, steps 3, 4 and 5, will be controlled by the active player. Just to remind you, in our case it was the Italian player who decided to settle an issue. So in the third step, the active player will choose one of the issues in the waiting room and one of the events in the waiting room and they will both be placed in the on the table area. When moving the issue, move it with all the existing influence cubes on that issue. When you choose the new event card, and that event card has this influence icon, the active player may take one of their influence cubes and place it on that event card. That means that it's going to be this player resolving that event when one of the next two issues will be settled. In the step number four, the active player has to add one new issue card to the empty space in the waiting room. As this symbology indicates, there are two options. First one is to draw two new cards from the draw deck, and one of those cards will be placed to the waiting room, and the other one will be discarded. Now, there is a second option. The active player may add the topmost or the second topmost or the third topmost card from the discard pile to the waiting room. If they would decide to take the topmost card from the discard pile and place it in the waiting room, it would be for free. They would not have to spend any influence. If the active player decides to take the second topmost card from the discard pile and place it in the waiting room, the cost is one influence. If they would decide to choose the third topmost card from the discard pile and add it to the waiting room, they would have to pay two influence. Paying influence means that they would take it from their available area and place it in the exhausted area. Any player can inspect the discard pile at any time, but they not may change the order of those cards. So this way, even the cards from the discard pile may still get back to the waiting room and actually even to the table. 
And finally, in the fifth step, draw the top event card from the draw deck and immediately resolve the crisis, which is the event at the top of the newly drawn card. If the event draw deck would ever run out, reshuffle the discard pile and create the new draw deck. If the crisis event would be uprising check, perform that uprising check immediately and I'll cover these uprising checks later in the video. When all those five steps are completed, return the active player card back to its position on the game board. In addition to the political action, you may perform military action and you may perform it before or after the political action. First, you may deploy one and only one of your military units onto a region track where you don't have the military unit yet. And you may only deploy the military units to these four columns, so to the columns 5 through 8. You may also redeploy a military unit which is already deployed in one of the region tracks. Again, you may place it in any empty spot in any region track where you don't have the military unit yet. In other words, you may not have two military units in the same region. And each space can only contain one military unit. When you place a military in one of these three columns, and either from your available area or you redeploy one of your already deployed military, you have to apply the effects shown at the top of that column. In this case, you would have to lose one happiness and you may take two influence from the exhausted area and place it back into your available area. In this column, you would have to lose four happiness, but you can reclaim three influence from the exhausted area back to your available area. These unrest tokens may never be in the same space or even to the right of any military unit in that region. So if you deploy a military unit and the unrest token is in the same space or to the right of that military unit, place it one space to the left of the newly placed military unit. In other words, military form a cap beyond which the unrest tokens may never advance. Military also provides bonuses during the uprising checks. Discs placed in the column 8 provide this bonus and discs placed in the column 5, 6 and 7 provide this particular bonus and I'm going to talk about those bonuses in the uprising check section. The second possible military action is to demobilize. You may not take both military actions, only one of them and when you demobilize you may take any military, either from your available area, or deployed military, or even the exhausted military, and move it to the highest numbered empty space in this demobilized area. You immediately gain the happiness equal to the value of that empty space. So in this case, Italy would raise the happiness by 4. Each space can only be occupied by one military unit, except for the space number one, which can hold unlimited number of tokens. These two spaces are only available in a four player game. During the game, you may be even forced to demobilize one or more of your military units. The happiness track is divided into three sections and each section determines how many military units you can have. So if your happiness drops, let's say France would get to this yellow section, you must reduce your military. You must take one of your military from anywhere and you must place it to this one space. The action is called mutiny. You must perform this mutiny immediately when your happiness drops one section. However, if you would increase your happiness later in the game, you don't get that demobilized military unit back. Essentially, any demobilized military units are removed from the game. Uprising checks are triggered by the event cards, either as the crisis or as the result of the event itself. Uprising check consists of multiple steps and you can find those steps on this 8 card. So first, you will have to determine the region for the uprising check. It may be specified by the event card and if it's not, the uprising check will be performed in the region with the highest unrest, so with the unrest token furthest to the right. In case of a tie, it will happen in all tied regions. 
Then roll a die for each region where you have to perform the uprising. The position of the unrest markers indicate the die roll value needed for the uprising. The roll must be equal or higher than that value. If the unrest marker is in the first or second column, then there is no uprising possible. Then if you have a military in the region and you have them in one of these three columns, you can apply plus one or minus one to the die roll. Each player has to announce this intention before the die roll. When more than one player wants to modify the die roll, the active player goes last. Players with military units in this column don't have the option to modify the die roll. Then you can finally roll a die. If the die value after applying all the modifications is equal or higher than the number in the corresponding column, then the uprising in that region occurs. Now in our example we have to make another die roll for the second region. Since there's no player with the military unit that could modify the die roll, apply the value which is rolled and in this case again the uprising would occur even in Middle East. If there was no uprising at all, you can immediately end this uprising check procedure now, but in our example it happens in both regions and so perform the following procedure for each region starting with the top region then in the regions in this order and you have to resolve the full procedure for one region before you proceed to the full procedure for the next region. So when the uprising actually happens in the region, one of the settled issues from that region will be unsettled. First you have to determine the player. Uprising will affect the player with most settled issues in that region. So if let's say UK player would have two settled issues in Europe and other players would only have one, then the UK player will be affected. If there is a tie, like here we have three players with one settled issue in Europe, then the player with the strongest military in that region, which is the player with the disc which is furthest to the left, decides which player will be affected. Let's say Italy decides it's going to be the US player. If the uprising would be resolved in a region where no player has any settled issue, end the uprising check immediately. However, you would move this power keg token at the end of the procedure anyway. I'll talk about that in a minute. So the affected player has to choose the highest valued issue card and that card will be unsettled. If that player would have only one card which would be with the highest value, that card will be unsettled. If the player would have multiple cards with the same highest value, that player chooses which one will be unsettled. Then we have the affected player. We have the issue which is unsettled and now starting with the player who controlled that issue and then proceeding clockwise, players will bid military and influence for the new control of that issue. You can only bid available military or the military you have deployed in the same region. So in this case France may not use this military to bid for the Europe issue. Now this bonus bid 2 means that the players with the military deployed in the same region may count this military as two military units. Military is the primary asset for bidding. So if the US player starts with one military, the French player would have to bid more. If they wouldn't have more military, they can bid the same one military, but they have to add certain number of influence cubes. Let's say they would add three. Now Italy would have to bid one military as well and let's say they would bid four or five influence and let's say UK player would decide to bid this military as two military units and in that case when you bid more military than the previous bid you don't have to add any influence. So after UK bids two military US would have to bid two military as well again with some influence and the bidding continues like this until players are not willing or not able to outbid the previous bid. In that case they pass and when all players except one pass in the bidding, that last remaining player wins the bid. Let's say it was the UK player. Let's say the UK player would bid two military units and four influence. 
they have to move the influence and also the military to the exhausted area. And for each military, and in this case it was two military, they have to lose one happiness. All losers keep all their military and influence. In case nobody would bid for that issue, issue would be discarded. And if the issue would have this no military icon, players would not be able to bid military, they would only bid influence. Then increase the power keg level in that region by one. And note that this power gag tokens can only be placed in this first, second and third column. So if it would have to move to this column, that would be ignored. And then move the unrest token to the space right of this power keg token. So after resolving the uprising in Middle East, power keg token will be moved one space to the right. And the unrest token will be placed to this space. You have to move this power keg token and reset the unrest token even if no player would control any issues in that region. Now, the player who won the issue would take the issue and select one of those options. If there are any strategy counters on that issue, all those counters are discarded. And then the new owner will select one of those options. They may actually select the same one as the previous owner and you would apply all the effects again. Even if that issue would be won by the previous owner, that previous owner could choose the same option or any different option every time you would apply those effects again. Then, if this was the first successful uprising in the game, and even if players would have no settled issues in that region, if simply the die roll would determine that there is an uprising in the region, Players will now select their strategy cards that will affect their strategy for the rest of the game. Because each strategy card provides additional scoring options. First, each player will sum up these star values on their issue cards. And the player with the lowest score, in this case the Italian player, would choose the card first. Take your strategy token, choose one of those strategy cards and place your token on that card. Then the player with the second lowest value would choose second. However, they may only choose one of the unchosen card. This one, claimed by Italy, may not be chosen by any other player. This way, each player will only have one strategy card and each card will only be claimed by one player. Continue like this with the next player and then with the player with the highest value. And in case players would have the same value of their issues, the player who is closest to the active player would choose first. So in this case, this player would go first with the value 4, then these two players have the same value 6, but this one is closer to the active player, so the order would be first, second, third and fourth. All chosen cards remain phase up for all players and the unchosen card is returned back to the box. Players are free to make any negotiations and deals, however, they may never exchange any game material. But there's one exception. As part of the deal, one player can place up to six influence cubes from their available pool to the exhausted area, and other player may reclaim the same amount of influence cubes from the exhausted area to their available pool. Then deals for the current turn are binding, Deals for another turns are not. Let's say it's the UK player's turn and they make a deal with the US player that the UK player will settle this issue now. Then the UK player will place this issue on the table and in exchange the US player will settle that issue next turn. If they agree, then the UK player must settle that issue because the deals for current turn are binding. However, US player would have to settle this issue in the next turn and for that next turn the deal is not binding. So US player would not have to settle that issue. If at any time during the game your happiness drops down to zero, it will stay there for the rest of the game. It may never be moved up again. On the other hand, if your happiness gets to 25 space, it may not move any further, any excess value is lost. However, you can still drop down later in the game. At the end of the game, 
players will score bonus points based on their position on this happiness track. The player with the most points would score 6 victory points, player in the second place would score 4 victory points, last player would score 0 victory points. In case of a tie, like here, first player scores 6 victory points, both of these players would score the second highest value, so 4 victory points, but they would cover these two spaces. And that means this player would score 0 victory points. Note that there is no Japanese player in the game, however, the Japan happiness marker moves along the track and the position of the Japanese marker and also the Italian marker determines whether Japan or Italy sign the treaty or not. If their markers are on the 15th space, they do sign the treaty. If they're on the 14th space or below, they don't. When you draw new issue cards from the draw deck, and one of those new cards is this game end card, you must place that card in the waiting room, and the other card is discarded. Then the game continues normally. Players can place influence cubes on this end game card because its value is actually 7 victory points. Then when this game end card is actually settled, the game ends immediately. Don't perform the settle the issue procedure. So you don't even resolve the event which is on the table. The game simply ends immediately. Then perform the final scoring. Each player sums up these values on the issue cards they control. Then each token with your flag on your issues is worth one victory point. So the US player has two naval tokens with the US flags. That's two victory points for US player. However, the UK player with the French token here means that this French token is not worth any victory points for the UK player. And it's also zero victory points for the French player because the French player doesn't have that token on their issues. Then add the victory points for happiness. And each player will also add the victory points from the strategy cards. When counting the victory points for these kind of categories, you don't count the tokens only on your issues, but in all players' issues. So in this case, the player will get one victory point for each self-determination token. And since there are three tokens on all issues, this would be worth three victory points. When counting the victory points for military, you only count your military and you count everything except for the demobilized military. So you can even count the exhausted unit. This type of bonus depends on whether the Italy or Japan signed the treaty, which depends on the position of their happiness markers. And this bonus doubles the victory points you get from the happiness track. And that means you double the victory points you actually get for your position. You don't double the value of your happiness track. In this example, US player would get four victory points and this bonus doubles that value, so US player would get 4 additional victory points. Then the player with the highest score wins the game. In a two-player game, players can only take the role of UK or France. However, US is also present in the game, and it is present as a faction controlled by both players. US can even control issues, however, US cannot win the game. US faction will receive all the influence cubes, but no military units. In addition, remove the US happiness marker from the game, but keep the Italian and Japanese markers normally on the happiness track. During the game, at the end of each player's turn, that player must perform a US political action. Then after the next player's turn, again, that player must perform the US political action and so on and so forth. That means that US will take twice as many turns as the human players. US is considered to be controlled by the player acting for the US, and if US settles an issue, the acting player currently controlling US makes all the decisions for US. If US places influence on issues, they place the minimum number of cubes to control the issue, not more. If they add influence cubes to the issue they already control, they only add one. If US settles the issue, 
it never settles the issue for the player currently acting for the US. So in this case, if the French player would make the US political action, they would not be able to settle this issue as the US player. Then, when they actually settle the issue, the US player chooses the option with the least unhappiness for US. If tied, then the controlling player chooses the option. US may also be targeted by events, however those events would have no effect. When reclaiming influence, US will reclaim as much as they can up to the 6 influence tokens. Remember, US doesn't have any military units. Then the controlling player, let's say French in this case, may reclaim the same number of influence cubes as well. So if UK player would control US now and US would reclaim all the influence tokens from the exhausted area, in this case two influence tokens, UK player may also recover two influence tokens. And to final notes, during bidding, US player doesn't take place in bidding, so only the UK and French player may bid the military, and US player does not choose any strategy card. So that's how we play Versailles 1919. If you have any questions or comments, please put them into the comment sections below. I'll be happy to answer your questions. If you like the series, please subscribe. My name is Brian Salberets. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell and hope to see you next time.